David, thanks for talking with us. Thank thanks you. for talking to the sustainable life community. Um, so first question, um, how did Plastiki Crew, how did you guys acquire the 12,000 bottles um, that obviously built, that have put together Plastiki Crew? Well, we basically work with Waste Management, which is um, a local waste collector in San Francisco Bay Area, and they very kindly, we went to them and said, we want to use some of your bottles, and they looked at us and what do you want to use them for? We said, well, we want to build a boat, we want to use these points, and they got excited by it. And they started to uh, basically throw them into... Uh, Throw them, you know, rather than throwing them into the recycling stream, they said, "Yeah, look, we'll we'll give them to you." And so we took them, okay. cleaned them up, picked them out, and then each bottle's re-energized with dry ice as well. So each yeah, one's like a a buoyancy chamber. And what we actually, when we first started looking at designing the boat, um, our main influence for the hulls of the boat was pomegranate. So we started looking at how pomegranates cool. packed together. So there's a lot of biomimicry in the early stages of designing this vessel, cool. uh, which started back in 2006. Okay. Um, and just some simple information so everyone knows, um, when, when is Plastiki taking off and when is it planning on ending? Well, we get a nice day like now, but we've got these El Nino years, so the front's coming through real fast, and so we're hoping to get out of here by mid-March, and we should be down, um, you know, down in Sydney by sort of end of May, early June, after the World Oceans Day. Um, okay, so pretty exciting. that's exciting. Um, what types of studies and research would be taking place um, on the voyage, specifically in the Pacific Garbage Patch? Yeah, well, what we've tried to do is, with the message, is say that it's not just one patch. It's, you know, it's our entire ocean is basically being used yeah. to dumping ground. And we're seeing, basically, wherever there's a convergence zone, we're seeing a high accumulation of plastics. So what we'll be doing is working with other groups who are already doing research to use the same devices they're using. So our leader and Charles Moore's group, um, they've got a manta trawl, which is a very fine mesh trawl, and we'll trawl that at certain times of the day and use, basically, the, um, we'll, we'll count the sort of plastic we're seeing, tag it on a GPS and then create a log of what specific plastic we're seeing. We'll be doing sonographs as well, so we're doing under ocean um, sound, so we're listening to what's going on, recording sound. A lot of people don't think about that, but yeah. these massive container ships go out every day. 90% of our trade goes by the oceans. Big noise, big engine, it sort of, you know, obviously distracts and, and creates a, you know, an incredibly disturbing environment for marine mammals. So no one really thinks about this. We want to do like an ocean noise tracking. Um, and then working with people like Project Kaise who are looking at how to get the plastic out. So they have this um, system that they want us to use that they're going to train us in. And then we'll be doing other things like we've got a garden on board, we'll be tending the garden that we can take our own urine and pour it onto the, you know, to grow the garden. So we'll be growing all our own garden, our, ch our chards, our kales, we've got all our own sprouts on board, our alfalfa, our beans. It's a hotbed of sustainability on there in terms yeah, so of the innovation. The we've got solar and wind, we've got sea turbine, we've got bikes for generating electricity. Everything on board has been done by not taking the path of least resistance and trying to make it as sustainable as possible and say the solutions are there. Great. Um, are, are you hoping that the outcome and hype that plastic use creating creates mass recycling, or more along the lines of like boycotting plastic production in general? I think both? I think there's I think there's both. I think what we need to do is um, we need to sort of ban and eliminate the dumb use of plastic. So we'll be launching a site called myplastiki.com. And then it's kind of used as metaphors like, what is your plastiki? And one of the focuses of that site will be to make pledges around the four main items. So the plastic bag, the plastic bottles, soda bottles and water bottles, the plastic lids and the styrofoam cups and containers are the four main items ending up in our ocean. Styrofoam, we can ban today. It kind of went out of fashion with Tom Cruise. Just get rid of it. It was the 80s. It's gone. Get over it. And then we also got um, the plastic bag, which we're throwing away trillions of them around the world globally. Those two things we can get away with, gone, and we can find an alternative to come online. The other two are slightly harder. So what I'd say with people is increase the recycling, to increase um, their, their, their sort of awareness around the materials that are wrapping their food, that they're carrying with them, throwing away and make sure they're disposal. So that's that side. The other side is actually saying, is it plastic that's to blame 100% when we look at it as being ubiquitous, or is it our inability to actually design in a way that's smart. So waste is fundamentally inefficient design. Exactly. And what we need to start thinking about is how do we design smarter, more efficiently? How do we use materials more appropriately and understand those materials? So the second half of it is through the innovation of the new materials that we've created on board, um, that self-reinforcing PET. That's basically plastic bottles supporting plastic bottles to create the superstructure you see. That can come online and start to create an outlet for 38 billion plastic bottles at the end of landfill. You're probably running out of space. Is, is that the... No, no, I'm not. Oh, is, is, is that the kind of the brainchild behind the grant that you're trying to offer towards the uh, foundation that you've kind of sponsored? Uh, yeah, we've, we're doing um, a number of challenges. So we're going to do... Um, 
um, a beat waste challenge, a plasticky beat waste challenge um, that will be running when we set sail to try and encourage startup businesses to look at how the beat waste, new innovative companies, is up in waste. We've got a great panel of judges and individuals involved who are going to be helping us judge what's a really smart business to help beat waste. We'll be running a champion of change competition as well, putting together grants from our foundation to help people who are making a difference on the ground, who are passionate, who are out there, who are picking up, who are innovating artists, telling stories, whoever it may be who's out there connecting to this issue in a, in a creative way or an innovative oh, way. Companies right. such as HP, Nike, International Watch Company, um, are th those companies that are using the SRPT, um, and are there other companies that are, are using? No, none of those companies yet are using okay. SRPT. What we've um, tried to do is find partners who say, listen, we, we're willing to be open to working and to evolving and to understanding issues of sustainability seriously. Okay. HP was voted as you know, number one by Newsweek, which did an independent study, taking very different companies from all different sectors and putting them together, and they actually came out number one. Okay. Um, and what we're doing is we're looking at sort of the plastic um, sort of inspired in some respects computer that's just come out which is you know removing certain chemicals out of the production in the production process um, it's a, a PVC and BFR free um, laptop we're using laptops with less energy Great. all that sort of stuff we're trying to swing our materials into those big massive supply chains so that that can come online and we can start and say look there's real scale um, and with that scale we'll be able to actually try and create a tipping point but you know these are early days we're an unknown entity I guess in terms of you know we're we're just passionate individuals who are saying we've got to do something about this and you know and look here's some solutions and we just wanted to get out there and throw it out yeah so I mean as far as you know advice that you have to give to corporations and companies I mean obviously stay you curious offer... you know stay curious challenge yourself look at your uh -huh. supply chain look at the way you manufacture look at the way you dispose look at the way that you interact with your customer and use your brands to educate you know really you know start to act in a way that's like uh, you can do good by being good and you can be sustainable and you don't have to um, you know cut corners you know, and, and in the days now of any individual, any corporation, or any government thinking that we haven't got a problem is basically fooling themselves because we do. And as a, as a society, as a species on this planet, we need to contain you know, our three areas business, government, and, and consumers and say we're just one species. And we've basically fundamentally external ourselves, externalized ourselves rather from nature. We've created this false dichotomy that there's nature here and there's us over here. And because of that, we've lost pure respect for nature. And what we've done is we've basically disattached ourselves from the value and, and that means that we're basically eating wet the very foundation that is our ability to live on this planet and without that foundation we really are in some serious trouble and you know and the planet will still be here you know mm -hmm. so sustainability isn't just a sort of a buzzword it's a, it's a word that needs to be ingrained in every single action process in every way you think and everything you do it has to be at the core because it's we are the custodians we are the people who are responsible for this planet um, and if we don't want to live here then mother nature will flick us off pretty quickly <laughs> well, that was great. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thanks. Appreciate it. David. Sustainable Brands 2010. Get your ticket now. Do it. <laughs>